What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to start to learn how to build games with Pygame and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to learn how to build games with Pygame and Python. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, you guys have been asking for this for years, and finally we're going to get to Pygame for Python. And Pygame is just what it sounds like. It allows you to build games with Python, and they may or may not be as sophisticated of games as, you know, something you would play on Xbox or something, but I think you're going to be surprised just how intricate we can actually get with this. Now, we're going to start with the absolute basics and kind of move forward. You can see I've got this dot on the screen, and I'm moving around with arrow keys on my keyboard, uh, but we're going to quickly get into more advanced stuff. So, from now on on the channel on Thursday is going to be Pi Game, so tune in if you're interested in this, and be sure to subscribe and all those good things. So this is what we're going to be building in this video. Like I said, we're just going to get started and get things set up. But you can see I've got this little circle on the screen, and I can make it move around with my arrow keys and all that good stuff. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Pi Game series. So check that out if you haven't so far. Before we actually start writing code, we need to pip install Pi Game and get this all set up. So let's head over to our terminal. And first, I'm going to go mkdir. I'm going to create a directory. I want to put it in my C drive, and I'm just going to call this games. So then we can cd change directory into that games directory. And there we go. So you can see we're in C games. Now, before we get started, we want to create a virtual environment. Anytime we do anything big in Python with coding, we always want to create a virtual environment. So let's go Python dash m v e n v, and let's call our virtual environment vert. Go ahead and run that. All right, and now if we ls, we can see there's this vert directory here. So, all right, that looks like that worked. Now we need to turn on our virtual environment. And to do that, we go source vert scripts activate. And when we do, you'll notice now there's this little vert thing above the prompt. That means our virtual environment has been turned on. So now if we pip freeze to see what's installed in our virtual environment, there is nothing installed in there. So we need to install Pygame. So to do that, we go pip install Pygame. If you're on a Mac, it's probably pip3 install Pygame, but uh, that's good. So now we can go pip freeze, went ahead and installed it, and now we see we have Pygame. So that's really all we need to get started with Pygame. So while I'm here, I'm going to go touch uh, game.py, and now you see we have this game.py file. So all right, that looks good. Let's head back over to our Sublime Text Editor, and let's open up that file. So let's go to our C games directory, and there's that game file. We open it up, and there's nothing in there. So the first thing we need to do when we want to work with Pygame is to import Pygame. So let's go import Pygame. And now we need some setup stuff, right? So you're always going to have this stuff at the top of your Pygame file. So let's go Pygame.init. We want to initialize it. And let's define our screen. This is going to be a Pygame dot display dot set underscore mode. And inside of here, we can set the dimensions of our screen. So let's say we want this to be 800 pixels by 500 pixels, right? Nice, you know, yay big. Next, we need to go pygame dot display dot set underscore caption. So if you want to have a little title bar of your pygame game, this is where you set that. So I'm going to say codemy.com pygame tutorial. Like I said, you can leave that off if you want, but uh, put that in there. Uh, next, we need to define a clock. So every time you're running a game, there's always a clock to keep track of time, but also to keep track of everything else. So when your little game character moves, it's moving through time, basically. Every second, every millisecond, something changes. We need to keep track of that. That's how we keep track of things in the game. So a uh, clock is pretty important. So we need to define this as a pie game dot time dot clock instance. There we go. And then finally, we need to say running equals true. And running means our game is running. Whenever we want to turn off the game, we set running to false and the game ends, right? So pretty simple there. Before we get into this, let's create a couple of variables. DT first, and I'm going to set that equal to zero. 
Now, DT stands for Delta Time. It's a way for us to keep track of things as they happen during the game. We'll look at this a little bit more in just a second. We need to define a player underscore position. And player position because we're creating a player. Our player is just going to be a little circle, but hey, we still need to define it as something. So player position. And this is going to be a pygame.vector2. And we'll talk about vector2 stuff later on. Just for this video, just roll with it. And now we need to define where our player position will start. So we want to go screen at dot get underscore width. And then this is a function. Now let's divide that by two. If you get the width of the screen and then divide it by two, that will put it right in the middle. We need to do the same thing with screen dot get underscore height. And again, we want to divide it by two. So again, think of the height of the thing. If you then divided that by two, and you've taken the width of the whole thing and divided by two, that's going to put you right in the middle of the screen, right? So, all right, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, that's really all we need to get started. Now, before we write out more code, let's sort of scroll down a little bit and let's go pygame.quit. Uh, this will initialize our game and this will turn it off. So in between here, we need to tell the game what to do, right? While the game is running, we want to do stuff. And when it stops running, when running gets set to false, remember right here, we defined it as true. Well, then the game will end. So we sort of create a loop that will continue to run while the game is running, right? So basically in Python, when you have a variable while running, this is sort of the same as saying while running equals true, right? But we could do shorthand and just say while running, because up here we've set running equal to true. Now, inside of this loop, if we ever set running equal to false, well, that would turn off the game, right? So kind of keep that in mind. Actually, yeah, there we go. Yeah, tab over just one there. So, okay, what we need to do inside of here is to poll for events. We need to sort of be on the lookout for events. And one of those events is pygame.quit. So the pygame.quit event means that the user clicked the X, you know, this like top right screen, like here in Sublime, there's a big X there. If they click the X, well, then they want to close the window. Let's look out for that. So let's go for event in pygame.event.get. And I'm throwing out a lot of this code. This will become apparent more as we get into this stuff. For this video, we're just gonna kinda do a very basic thing and then we'll talk about it more in detail as we go forward. So. But for now, just think of an event as an event in the game, right? Something happens, that's an event. And you can get those by calling pygame event.get. So then let's say, hey, if that event.type equals pygame.quit, and I put lowercase here, actually it really should be quit, like uppercase. This is the pygame.quit lowercase, the little function here. But this means they click the X, right? Well, if they click the X, then we want to set the running to false. At the top here, when the game starts, it's running. We set it to true. If while it's running, at some point, somebody clicks the little X, that's this thing right here, we'll then set running to false. What happens when running gets set to false? Ah, the whole game stops and the whole thing disappears, right? So, okay, that looks good there. So that will keep track of that. So that will make sure the person has the ability to close out of the game if they want to. So now let's uh, pick the screen color. So this is a little bit more fun. Let's go screen dot fill. And you can pick any color you want. You could say, hey, blue, you could say red, you can use uh, hex color codes, FFF, FFF, I think that's maybe white, any of your hex color codes, I'm going to pick silver, because I don't know, why not, <laughs> right? Okay, so now we want to render our game here. So this is all the sort of preliminary stuff. Now we have to actually build out our game, right? So what's our game gonna be? Well, it's not gonna be very sophisticated. We just want a circle on the screen. So let's create a circle. Let's go pygame dot draw dot circle. This is a function and we wanna put it on the screen. Why screen? Well, because up here we've defined our screen as that 800 by 500 square screen, right? We're saying, hey, put it in that 800 by 500 square rectangle, I, should, I suppose. And what color? Well, we could say blue or we could get fancy and use our hex color codes. Let's go 033660. 
there. That's sort of a dark blue color. And then we want to put this at the player underscore position. And we want this to be 40 pixels in size. Now, have we defined a player position? Yes, we have. It starts out right in the middle of the screen, right? So we took half the width and half the height right in the middle of the screen. So that's where that will go, the player position. And like I said, 40. Okay. Now let's move our circle. So to do that, we create a variable called keys because we want to use our keyboard. And this is going to equal to pygame.key.get underscore pressed. And this get underscore pressed function will do just what it sounds like. It will get whatever key is pressed on your keyboard, right? So very cool. And here we could just run some logic to see which key was pressed. So let's say, hey, if the up arrow key gets pressed, go up, right? So that's if keys, which is this guy we just defined. And then here we can define which key is pressed by calling pygame.k underscore up. So k stands for the key on the keyboard. And the up stands for up arrow key. If you wanted to use letters, you could go key underscore W. That would be the W key on your keyboard, right? So sometimes W and S are used to go up and down and A and D, old school gaming like that. But we want to use the up arrow key. So that's just key dot up. Well, what do we want to happen when somebody presses the up arrow key? Well, we want the player position to move. So that's player position. And we want it to move up or down. In this case, we want it to go up. So up or down is Y, Y axis. The left or right is X, the X axis. So we want the player position of Y to go negative equals 300 times DT. Now this is counterintuitive. If we wanted to go negative 300, you would think that would go down. This will flip later on and we'll show you that. Um, so it's negative 300 and times DT. Remember up here, we set DT equal to zero. Uh, down at the bottom here, we'll play around with that. And this DT will make a little more sense and we'll talk about it more then. So, okay, that looks good there. We can copy the same thing here and do it again for K underscore down. And this is going to equal this time, not negative equals, but plus equals 300. So we can paste this in another couple of times and let's go left. And this is going to be instead of position Y, this is going to be position X. Same thing for this guy here. And same deal here, right? When we want it to go left, we want this to be negative 300. And these are pixels, we want it to move 300 pixels. Every time you press the key, you can change this to whatever you want. If you only wanted to move one pixel, it would go frighteningly slow, but you could do that, right? Same thing for this one, instead of K dot up, this is going to be K underscore right. So we have left, right, x and x, negative 300. And this one's going to be positive 300. So that's good there that will move our circle. Now we need to flip the display to sort of output our work to the screen. So like I said, we're going up and it's saying negative. Now we're going to flip the screen. So Let's go pygame.display.flip. So that looks pretty good. Now, finally, we need to set the clock stuff. And to do that, let's define DT. Remember, that's this guy right here. And also, it starts out at zero. And remember, I said that's delta time. So let's say delta time and say in seconds since the last frame. And this is used for frame rate independent physics. And we'll get into all this stuff more in detail as we go on here. But for this video, we're just going to set the DT to our clock dot tick. And this is going to tick 60 seconds in a minute. And we want to divide by a thousand here to make it go like in milliseconds, right? So, okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this guy. Head back over to our terminal. So you see I'm in my C slash games directory, virtual environment is turned on and we can run Python game.py. Uh oh, misspelled pie game. That is terrible. Pi T game. There we go. Line seven, man, errors right away. That doesn't bode well. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Another one. So pie game display, uh, misspelled display. Yeah, 
display. There we go. Okay. And is third time the charm? Yes, it is. All right, so you'll notice right off the bat, it says codemy.com high game tutorial. That's because right up here at the top here, we set the set caption to pygame.com pygame tutorial. We've got this thing. If we click on this thing to sort of activate it, if I press up, oh, it goes up, down, left, right. If I press the up and the left arrow key at the same time, woo, it goes like that. Could sort of do it like that. Very fun, very cool. This is a 40 pixel circle. We can change this to anything we want. So if we want this to be 100, ooh, not 1,000, 100, we just come down here to our pygame.draw.circle and set that to 100. Go ahead and save this. Head back over here, run this guy again. Oh, and now it's very big. You'll notice every time I click the button one time, boom, it bops 300. Now it's not exactly 300 pixels because this whole thing is only, what, 500 pixels, but it's 300 display units, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, but we could change that as well. Let's just do the up one and I'll change this to 900. So if we save this, head back over here, run this guy again. Now, if I press the up key, boom, it bops a lot. If I press the down key, you know, it takes three more to go back to the center. One, two, it's already almost off the screen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's because the up is 900, down is still only 300. So, all right, keep that in mind. And notice we've got this nice blue circle and the nice silver background. You can change those to anything you want. I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to 300. But you just change the circle color right there and the background color right there. Like I said, you can use the words. You know, we could change this to red if we wanted to. That would be just horrific, right? Oh, that is very ugly, <laughs> right? But you know, you could do that. Or like I said, you can use your hex color codes. So uh, let's see, what is it? FFF, FFF, is that white? I don't remember. I wanna say that it is. Let's just see. Oh yeah, so now it's white. Or you could just type in white. Or if you want, you can type in silver. So that's all there is to it. Very simple, just sort of things to keep in mind. Everything is kind of a loop here, right? So all of our code is in this while loop. And it says while the game is running, do all of this stuff. As soon as anybody hits the X button on the app, this thing up here, that sets running to false and the loop stops running and the game ends basically, right? Because once the loop stops running, then the next line is pygame.quit. This pygame.quit does not get activated while anything else is going on in the game or in the program, such as this while loop. So the loop is the important thing. It's continually looping and running and you know nonstop every millisecond or whatever it's running through here and it's looking at for events you know hey did somebody click a button or did hey somebody press a key what event has happened what does the game need to do well if you press a key it does this if they press the x it quits in either case if you quit then the whole while loop thing stops running because the while loop only goes while running equals true so as soon as you set running to false the game ends. So for instance here, if we change the up key to do running equals false, if we save this and run it, and I press down, 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 nothing happens. If I press up, oh, the game ends, it disappears. Why? Well, because we set running to false, and as soon as running gets set to false, this while loop stops while looping, right? And then the next thing to happen is pygame.quit. So very cool, very fun. Like I said, we're gonna get into this every Thursday from here on out for the next many, many months. And it should be really interesting and a lot of fun. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students to learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.